Crave, Pastor Epi here, and I'm so excited to share the Word of God with you as we get into this new series, talk about the different names of God. And tonight, I get to share with you the name of God, which is Jehovah Jireh, meaning the Lord is our provider. And hey, we're, we're gonna get there, it's gonna be amazing. But before we start, can I have two claps in a macho man? Oh yeah! Okay, let's be real. How many of you guys left me hanging right now? Okay, thank you for the faithful few that actually did that. I'm gonna keep on going, guys. But today, once again, we're gonna talk about how God provides. Now, I remember when I started going to church, I think I was in my teenage years, uh, we would have people give testimonies or tell stories about how God ministered in their lives. And there are so many times when people would say, man, I was struggling financially and you know, I prayed or the church prayed and in the mail, the exact amount came in and God is so good. <sighs> that, that's the crowd going wild as they worship the Lord. But I gotta admit guys, I was a little jaded back then where I was like, man, I hope that happens to me one day. Like I got the mailbox too. Like, come on, where the check's at, Lord? But guys, I gotta tell you, over time, as I continued to grow up and continue to be faithful and worked on that jadedness, right? I was actually able to see that God actually has provided for me and my life for such a long time. Get this, one time, about three years ago, my family and I were expecting our third child, uh, my, my baby Lily, she just turned three. Oh, she's perfect, guys. But the thing is, you know, we didn't have a van at that time. And so my wife and I were talking privately about, okay, how can we maneuver our finances? How can we save up? How can we do this? And to know that have a car payment man, it's gonna shrink our savings. It, it, we're gonna live paycheck to paycheck. And we weren't looking forward to it, but we had a need. But the thing is, we never talked about it out loud. We never preached it. We never talked about it from the stage that one day I'm at work and it's not even a, a thought in my mind. And this guy from our church comes into my office. He's never come to my office before. And he says, I need to talk to you. Guys, I, anxiety just hit me, boom. Like, what did I do wrong? How did I offend you? Like, I'm going through so many different things of like, did I not say hi to him? You know, and he's like, actually, I need to talk to you outside. So I'm following him and I'm leaving the office. And, and once again, I'm trying to think, what did I do wrong? And he asks me a question. He says, do you see that van? I'm like, yeah. He was like, that's your van. And it didn't connect. I'm like, oh, cool, all right, yeah. Wait, what? <laughs> kind of like that. And, and he, he, he began to walk me to this van, and it, guys, it had all the bells and whistles. It had, it had a backup camera. I'd never been used to a backup camera. Like, my backup camera was this, right? The thing is, so like, tears almost started coming to my eyes, and just this feeling of humility that God has allowed someone to provide something for me and my family for something that we need that I cannot afford on my own. And that blessing, we still use it today, guys. We, we still drive to and fro. We, we've driven cross country, just come here to Illinois. And man, I have been so blessed by God. But the thing is too, like if you wanna sit down and grab some coffee, hey, let's do it. But I can tell you that God has provided for me and my family time and time and time again. That when I do get unexpected bills, when, when life occurs, I don't freak out as much. Like I'm not 100% on this, guys. Sometimes I do freak out. But what goes to my mind is this. All right, God, how are you gonna handle this? I'm looking forward to it. Because God's credit, it's good. So let me ask you guys a question before we dive in today. Do you trust God that he'll provide for your needs as well? Like, do you trust him? Like, you, you might agree with me today as we talk about the scriptures and as we talk about God's character. You might say, yeah, I, I believe it, but do you trust it? Because the thing is, like, if we're honest about it, your answer might be revealed in how you react when the bill comes in or when a trial occurs. Like we might say, hallelujah, hallelujah, God is good. But then when trials and temptations hit us, we don't act like we trust him. We react in that. 
your answer might actually be revealed in your anger, in your anxiety, in how you treat others. And I believe that scripture has so many great reasons why we can trust that God will not only cares about our needs, but that also he will provide for our needs. Look at this. In Philippians chapter four, verse 19, ready? Boom, it's right there. It says this. And my God, Paul is saying, will supply every need of yours according to what? His riches in glory in Christ Jesus. God will supply. God will provide from where? Not like the Bank of America or Chase wherever, right? But according to the riches in glory in Christ Jesus. I like how the message paraphrased this. Look at this. Can we put that on the screen too? Boom! Thank you so much, Nathan. I appreciate it. You can be sure that God will take care of everything you need. His generosity exceeding even yours in the glory that pours from Jesus. Our God and Father abounds in glory that just pours out into eternity. And I like this part too. Yes. Isn't that amazing that God is willing, that God cares, that God desires to provide from you, for you from him? He's the source and to trust that. So we're gonna be today is in Genesis chapter 22 because, hey, where did this name come from? Jehovah Jireh, the Lord is my provider. Well, let me summarize this story for you because in Genesis 22, we're gonna see a story of Abraham. In case you don't know who he is, man, God chose a person who we have no clue about that he said, I, from you, I'm gonna build a great nation. From you, the promise of the Messiah, Jesus, would come through the lineage of you. Now, here's the problem. Abraham was old. And the thing is, his wife, she was old too. And biology doesn't work very well when you're in your older years. I'll just say that, okay? And so it would be a miracle. And so Abraham, he waited, look at this, he waited 25 years for God's promise to occur. And the beauty of Abraham's life, as you read the book of, of Genesis, is Abraham wasn't perfect. He messed up. He tried to help out God. He tried to be his own resource. He tried to be his own bank, you could say, rather than depending on the bank of God, rather than depending on the glory of God to say, God, you said it and you're gonna fulfill it. 25 years. So now the promise has come and his name is Isaac. And you know what happens? As Isaac, well, a lot of scholars believe he's in his teenage years, if not early 20s. And God says, hey, Abraham, I'm gonna test you, as it says in the beginning of Genesis 22. And this is my test for you, Abraham. I want you to take this promised child that I, that I promised, and I want you to sacrifice him. Say what? Like sacrifice. In case you don't know what that means, it means muerto. Wait, I messed up. That's a Spanish word. That means dead, right? Like no longer breathing. I want you to go kill this son of yours that I promised. So you know what Abraham did? He said, all right, I'll go. So he gets a crew and he goes with Isaac and he's going up to this mountain. And if you could be in the sandals of Isaac real quick, you can imagine like, dad, why are you waking me up so early? I'm riding a camel right now. Why are you waking me up so early? And what are we gonna sacrifice? And, and even Isaac says to, to Abraham, hey dad, I, I see that we have everything for a sacrifice, but I don't see an animal to sacrifice. And Abraham says, don't worry, the Lord will provide. Well, we move on. And, and we notice that Abraham even says to his crew, he says, hey guys, we, he and Isaac will be back. Because in Abraham's mind, potentially he might say, all right, God is telling me to sacrifice him. Maybe God will bring him back to life. Or maybe God is gonna stop me. Maybe God is gonna do something. I don't know what God is gonna do, but I'm gonna take a step of faith and I'm gonna be obedient to what God has called me to do. Now, fast forward as you continue to read chapter 22. You start seeing this old man. He's like in his 90s now. And once again, Isaac is about 13 to his early 20s. 
And, 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 and he says, all right, here, put, put the altar there. And they get the wood and, and, and we're getting it ready, kind of like a barbecue a little bit. And, and he says, all right, Isaac, lay down. Say what? Lay down, son. And Isaac lays down. And as you continue to read, it says that Abraham started to bound, bind him to the altar. Now, once again, be in Isaac's shoes for a second. You're like, okay, dad, like, what the heck? Isaac could have easily just overpowered his dad. He could have said, dad, you're tripping. But Isaac was obedient as well to trust his dad. And so anyways, so he's bound. He can't move now. And in the mind of Abraham, he's about to sacrifice his son. And, and the thing is, he, he got a knife. And, and now to take a sacrifice, you know, Abraham wouldn't be like, okay, um, ooh, it's gonna be icky. Ugh. Like he wasn't gonna shank him to death. Abraham says, if I'm gonna kill my son, I'm gonna make it as painless as possible. I'm gonna be as swift as possible. And so just in that mindset, he gets his hand up and then the angel of the Lord said, okay, okay, calm down, Abraham. You have proven yourself. You have, you have been faithful. And God then provided a ram to be sacrificed. And that was the place where, where, where Abraham said, I'm gonna call this place, the Lord provides. And so look at this, this is so cool, guys. Once again, if you were in Abraham's sandals and God told you, go take your son and sacrifice him, how far would you get in the journey? Would you get far as like not even leaving the tent? Like, I don't know if I heard you well, God, I had pizza last night. Like, or would you get as far as going with the crew with, with the altar stuff and then thinking like, oh, I don't know if I trust this. I don't know if it's gonna happen. Or, or, or would you stop as you are tying Isaac to the altar? Would you be like, okay, this is far enough. This is far enough. Or would you even go as far as Abraham? And the thing is, like, even in our own lives, this, this happens too, right? God calls us to obedience and he calls us to a life of faith. And the thing is, like, once again, sometimes we don't even leave the tent. Sometimes we might take a step of faith. Sometimes we might say, okay, I'm gonna share my faith or God, I'm gonna get rid of this pornography or God, I'm gonna get rid of this music or God, I'm gonna stop hanging out with this crew right here. But it gets too uncomfortable. You're like, oh, I don't wanna do this. But the thing is, I wanna encourage you guys in that journey, in that calling, and what God is calling you to do, he'll provide you the strength. He'll provide you every single thing that you need. He'll provide you the inspiration through his word. He'll provide you a community of people through our tribes. He'll provide you the empowerment, the supernatural empowerment that you need to live this life of obedience, crave. But once again, how far are you willing to go? So here's the bottom line of our lesson today. Are you ready? The Lord is our provider. So let me revisit this question once again. You can agree with me about the story. It's right there in your Bible, Genesis 22. The Lord provides. In Philippians, the Lord provides from his glory. But do you trust him to provide? Because scripture says he cares about you. Scripture says that he is ever present. Scripture says that he hears your prayers. And tonight we shared that God provides. And maybe one day your need will be financial. Maybe your need will be for a friend or your need will be for peace. Or maybe it's for purpose and identity. God, what is my calling? The Lord provides. He'll provide that friend. He'll provide what you need. And remember, God is not some holy cosmic genie saying, okay, what do you want? Because sometimes, as we read in the book of James chapter four, we ask amiss, meaning this, like sometimes we try to talk God, don't, don't lie guys, come on. Like we try to talk God into doing what we wanna do. Like, like have you ever prayed this? Like, Lord, can I have a Bugatti? Now, now hear me out, God, right? If you gave me a Bugatti, then I would drive kids to crave, right? Would you say that? I mean, I prayed that one time, right? Or, or God, would you give me a mansion? And you know, and if you gave me a mansion, then I can have tribes here, you know, once a month. Yeah, but the thing is like, God knows our hearts that sometimes what we're asking for is more for our selfish gain. But God has promised that he'll give you what you need.
And so I wanna challenge you guys to look away from the pain, look away from the struggle, look away from the doubts and look towards God who says, I will provide for you. I will be with you every single step of the journey and hold on to this timeless truth. Ready? Hey, Craig, come on, get, get, get your hands up. Here we go. Look at this. He provides for you and he pours out provision on us. So instead of us trying to solve our own problems and provide for ourselves, call to the provider. You can say, Jehovah Jireh, Yahweh, you are my provider and I need you. Lord, I need you. And hold on to this verse, you ready? Philippians chapter four, verse 19, from the message, boom. You can be sure that God will take care of everything you need his generosity exceeding even yours in the glory that pours from Jesus. Our God and Father abounds in glory that just pours out into eternity. Yes. So tonight I ask you guys this. Have you been dependent on your own resource? Ask for forgiveness and say, God, I don't wanna depend on me anymore. I desire that you provide for me that you provide the friends, you provide the, the patience, you provide the grace, you provide the love because God, when I do it, I run out or I'm on you know, fumes, whatever it may be, but God, I just wanna live from the overabundance of everything that you provide. God is so good, amen, Crave? Let me pray for you. God, I thank you so much that you don't leave us high and dry that you are not just an observer of our lives, but you engage with us, you empower us, you provide for us for every single thing that we need. And so Lord, I ask you that you would break our pride, that you would humble us, Lord, to fall to our knees and cry out to you, Lord, for whatever provision that we may need. And God, I thank you so much that you are not a stingy God, but Lord, you pour out over and abundantly. Yes, in Jesus' name, amen. Hey, Crave, one more thing. Two claps in the macho man. Oh, yeah. Hey, that was way better. God bless you guys.